Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this beginner's guide to Adobe After Effects. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a simple animation in After Effects. So in a previous episode, we learned about keyframes and how they are used to create animation sequences in After Effects. Now it's time to get more hands-on with keyframes. In this video, we are going to be covering the following topics. Adding keyframes, setting keyframe properties, and duplicating properties. After this video, you will have a good understanding of how to use keyframes to animate. So let's get into it. So here I am in After Effects and I have a project open demonstrating a simple animation sequence that we are going to create in this video. This is a nice and easy animation exercise which will help you get started and understand animating in After Effects. Here I have a circle animation moving from left to right, and as the circle moves, it also changes size and opacity. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to animate position, scale, and opacity. So right now I am in preview mode, so I'll press spacebar to stop it for now. So before we start the tutorial, let's take a quick look at what we will be creating. Now, if you want to follow along with this video and create your own animation like this, you will need to download the project folder. You can download the project folder for a small fee. The download link with instructions is in the description. The download folder comes with lots of exercise documents we will be using on this course that have been carefully developed to aid your learning experience. The folder also comes with document resources such as videos, graphics, and images you can use to build your first video presentation from scratch later on in this course. To get the full learning experience, I recommend you get the project folder. Download link with instructions is in the description. So with the project folder open, click into the S2 Essential Practice folder, then into folder 9, Simple Animation, then into the Preview folder and open the Simple Animation Preview After Effects file, and you will have the same document I have open here. So here we have a simple animation that is 10 seconds long. And we know this because we can see the seconds displayed in the time ruler at the top of the timeline panel. So I'll click and drag my time indicator across here to five seconds. At five seconds, the circle has moved from the left side of the screen, point A, to the right side of the screen, to point B. And if I continue to drag to 10 seconds, the circle moves back to point A. So the start and end of the animation appears the same. Now, if I drag my time indicator between one and five seconds, we can see that as the circle moves from point A to point B, the size and opacity changes. When we get to point B at five seconds, the size and opacity is the same as point A. Now, as I continue to move to 10 seconds, the same animation happens on the way back to point A. So if I hit spacebar to preview, this appears to be an infinite animation as the end is the same as the start. Okay, so what's going on in the timeline panel? So if we look carefully in the timeline panel, we can see we have one shape layer called circle. Now we can tell this is a shape layer because of the icon next to it. In After Effects, a shape layer is represented as a star. In this instance, the layer bar color is set to purple. So under our purple shape layer, we can see some keyframes. And if we look carefully over to the left in the timeline panel, we can see the keyframes are set for position, scale, and opacity. So first, let's pay attention to position. So here we can see we have a keyframe at the start, one keyframe in the middle, and one at the end. Now, I'll click and drag my time indicator to the start of the timeline. So in the timeline panel, at the very start, we can see we have a keyframe for position. Now this keyframe is setting the value for this position in the visual composition panel above at point A. So I'll click and drag my time indicator across here to five seconds. At five seconds, the circle has moved to the other side of the screen to point B. In the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for position. Now this keyframe is setting the value for this position in the visual composition panel at point B. Now if I continue to drag to 10 seconds, the circle has moved back to point A. In the timeline panel, we can see we have a keyframe at the end for position. Now this keyframe is setting the value for this position in the visual composition panel at point A. So to move from left to right, it takes three keyframes to do it. One, a keyframe for point A, 
two a keyframe for point B, and three a keyframe back to point A. Now let's pay attention to scale. So here we can see we have a keyframe at the start, three keyframes in the middle, and one at the end. Now I'll click and drag my time indicator to the start of the timeline, and in the timeline panel, at the very start, we can see we have a keyframe for scale. This keyframe is setting the value for scale in the visual composition panel above at point A. So I'll click and drag my time indicator across here to the midway point between point A and point B. At this point, the circle has decreased in scale. In the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for scale. This keyframe is setting the value for scale in the visual composition panel at the midway point. Now, if I continue to drag to five seconds, the scale of the circle is back to its original size at point A. In the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for scale. This keyframe is setting the value for scale in the visual composition panel at point B. If I continue to drag the time indicator across here to the midway point between point B and point A, at this point, the circle has decreased in scale again. And in the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for scale. Again, this keyframe is setting the value for scale in the visual composition panel at the midway point. If I continue to drag to 10 seconds, the scale of the circle is back to its original size at point A. And in the timeline panel, we can see we have a keyframe at the end for scale. So to change the scale of the circle between point A and B, it's taken five keyframes to do it. One, a keyframe for scale at point A. Two, a keyframe for scale at the midpoint to point B. Three, a keyframe for scale at point B. Four, a keyframe for scale at the midpoint back to point A. And five, a keyframe for scale back at A. Now let's pay attention to opacity. So here we can see, like with scale, we have a keyframe at the start, three keyframes in the middle, and one at the end. Now I'll click and drag my time indicator to the start of the timeline. And in the timeline panel, at the very start, we can see we have a keyframe for opacity. This keyframe is setting the value for opacity in the visual composition panel above at point A. So I'll click and drag my time indicator across here to the midway point between point A and point B. At this point, the circle has changed opacity. In the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for opacity. This keyframe is setting the value for opacity in the visual composition panel at the midway point. Now, if I continue to drag to five seconds, the opacity of the circle is back to full at point A. In the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for opacity. This keyframe is setting the value for opacity in the visual composition panel at point B. If I continue to drag the time indicator across here to the midway point between point B and point A, at this point, the circle has changed opacity again. And in the timeline panel, we can see we have another keyframe for opacity. Again, this keyframe is setting the value for opacity in the visual composition panel at the midway point. If I continue to drag to 10 seconds, the opacity of the circle is back to full at point A. And in the timeline panel, we can see we have a keyframe at the end for opacity. So to change the opacity of the circle between point A and B, it's taken five keyframes to do it. One, a keyframe for opacity at point A. Two, a keyframe for opacity at the midpoint to point B. Three, a keyframe for opacity at point B. Four, a keyframe for opacity at the midpoint back to point A. And five, a keyframe for opacity back at point A. So with that overview, let's now see how you can create this animation from scratch. So to help you, I have prepared a simple worksheet for you. So with the project folder open, click into the S2 Essential Practice folder, then into folder nine, Simple Animation, then into the template folder and open the Simple Animations template After Effects file. And you should open a document like this. So here I have the same document I just showed you, but without the animation applied. Now, if we look in the timeline panel, we can see a circle shape layer at the top. Now, if we come into the timeline panel and click the triangle next to the purple square, this will toggle down to reveal the contents and transform options. If I click the triangle next to transform, we can toggle down the position, scale, rotation, and opacity options. 
So here we can see that there are no keyframes applied to position, scale or opacity. This is blank, ready to animate. So let's begin. So when animating in After Effects, it helps to take one step at a time. It helps to focus on one part of the animation, and when that is in place, we can then focus on another part. So first, I'm going to start with position. So I want my circle to start at point A and reach point B at five seconds. So first, I'll put down a keyframe for position. Now, the first thing to learn about keyframes is when you place a keyframe, it will be placed wherever the time indicator is on the timeline. So first, I will make sure my time indicator is right at the start of my composition. With my time indicator at the start of the composition, I'll carefully come over to the transform properties to the left of my timeline panel. Next, I will click on the stopwatch icon next to position. Upon click, you will see the first keyframe appear on the layer. Next, I will drag my time indicator over to five seconds on the timeline, halfway through my composition. Okay, so with my timeline indicator at five seconds, this time I'm going to come into the composition panel above and click on the circle. With it selected, I'm going to click and drag the circle across the screen to point B. Now, once I release the circle at point B, we can see a new keyframe for position has appeared in the timeline. By moving the shape at five seconds to a new place in the composition panel, it has created a new keyframe. So now if I click and drag the time indicator back to the start and back to five seconds, we can see the circle move. Excellent. We have just created the first animation. So now we have one keyframe to start and one keyframe to end the sequence. So now I'll move the time indicator back to five seconds. Next, I want to place another keyframe, but this time at the end of the composition. So I'll move the time indicator across to the end of the timeline. Now at this point, I want my circle to move back to point A, exactly where I started. Now, I could drag the circle back across like I did a second ago, but how am I going to be sure I'll put it in the exact same place? Well, here is a quick tip. What I'm going to do next is come and click the first keyframe for position. With it selected, I'll press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. With my time indicator at the end of the timeline, I will now press Command V on Mac or Control V to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear at the end and the circle has now jumped back to point A in the composition panel. By copying and pasting the first keyframe at the start, we are pasting the new value at the end of the timeline. So if I now click and drag the time indicator back to the start and press spacebar to preview, we will see the circle move from point A to point B and then back to point A again. Because the end of the animation sequence is the same as the start, when previewing like this, it appears to be an infinite animation. So we have one keyframe at the start at point A, one keyframe to move to point B in the middle of our timeline, and one keyframe at the end to go back to point A. Easy. So that's position done. Now let's look at scale. Now for this animation, I want the circle to scale down and then up again between point A and point B. And I want it to do this on the way to point B and on the way back to point A. So first, I'll put down a keyframe for scale. So first, I'll make sure my time indicator is right at the start of my composition. With my time indicator at the start of the composition, I'll carefully come over to the transform properties to the left of my timeline panel. And next, I will carefully click on the stopwatch icon next to scale. Upon click, you will see the first keyframe appear on the layer, though this time under the position keyframe. So next, I will drag my time indicator over slowly, watching the circle as it moves across to point B. When the circle reaches the midway point, I'll stop. So looking in the timeline panel, we can see that the time indicator is now halfway between the first and second keyframe for position. This is exactly where we want it to be. So next, I'll come over to the transform properties in the timeline panel and focus on the scale property. Right now, we can see the scale of the shape is at 100%. What I'm going to do now is put my mouse cursor over the 100% value until I see my mouse cursor change to arrows pointing left and right. Then I'm going to click and drag the value down to 50%. Upon release, the size of the circle will be reduced to 50% in the visual composition panel, and we will see a keyframe appear for scale in the timeline. 
Perfect. So next, I will drag my time indicator over to 5 seconds to the exact point of the keyframe for position. So right now we can see that the circle is still at 50% at this point. At this point, I want my circle to be back to the same size it was at point A. So just like earlier, I'm going to come over and click on the first keyframe for scale. With it selected, I'll press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. And with my time indicator exactly at 5 seconds, I will press Command V on Mac or Control V on PC to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear for scale and the circle is now back to 100%. By copying and pasting the first keyframe for scale at the start, we are pasting the same value here. So now, if I click and drag the time indicator back to the start and back to 5 seconds, we can see the circle move and also change scale down and up, exactly how we want it. So as I continue to drag my time indicator from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, I want to create the same scale animation on the circle moving back to point A as I did moving to point B. So next, I will drag my time indicator over slowly, watching the circle as it moves across back to point A. When the circle reaches the midway point, I'll stop. So looking in the timeline panel, we can see that the time indicator is now halfway between the second and third keyframe for position. So what I'm going to do here is copy the keyframe which holds the value for 50% I created earlier. So I'll carefully select the keyframe at the midway point. With it selected, I'll press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. And with my time indicator exactly midway, I will press Command V on the Mac or Control V on PC to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear for scale and the circle is now back to 50%. Nice. So as I continue to drag my time indicator across to 10 seconds, I want the circle to change scale back to 100%, the original size. So again, I'm going to use the same copy and paste technique. So I'll click on the first scale keyframe at the start of the composition to select it. With it selected, I'll press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. And with my time indicator exactly at 10 seconds, I'll press Command V on Mac or Control V on PC to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear for scale and the circle is now back to 100%. By copying and pasting the first keyframe for scale at the start, we are pasting the same value here again. Great, so that finishes the scale keyframes. So if I now drag my time indicator back to the start and press spacebar to activate preview, we can now see the circle nicely scales down and up as it moves from point A to point B and back again. So that's scale done. So I'll Press spacebar to stop the preview and drag the time indicator back to the start. Now let's look at the last effect we want to apply to this animation. Now for this animation, I want the circle to change opacity when it scales down, then appear back to 100% opacity when it scales back up again. And I wanted to do this on the way to point B and on the way back to point A. So first I'll put down a keyframe for opacity. So first I'll make sure my time indicator is right at the start of my composition. With my time indicator at the start of my composition, I'll carefully come over to the transform properties to the left of my timeline panel. Next, I will carefully click on the stopwatch icon next to opacity. Upon click, you will see the first keyframe appear on the layer, though this time under the scale keyframe. So next, I will drag my time indicator straight over to the second scale keyframe on the timeline as the scale keyframe indicates the midway point between point A and point B. We will also see the circle move from point A to the midway point in the composition panel. This is exactly where we want to be. So next, I will come over to the transform properties in the timeline panel and focus on the opacity property. Right now, we can see the opacity of the shape is at 100%. What I'm going to do now is put my mouse cursor over the 100% value until I see my mouse cursor change to arrows pointing left and right. Then I'm going to click and drag the value left to 30%. Upon release, the opacity of the circle will be reduced to 30% in the visual composition panel, and we will see a new keyframe appear for opacity in the timeline. Perfect. So next, I will drag my time indicator over to 5 seconds 
to the exact point of the keyframes for position and scale above. So right now we can see that the circle is still at 30% opacity at this point. At this point, I want my circle to be back to the same opacity it was at point A. So just like earlier, I'm going to come over and click on the first keyframe for opacity. With it selected, I will press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. And with my time indicator exactly at five seconds, I will press Command V on Mac or Control V on PC to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear for opacity and the circle is now back to 100% opacity. By copying and pasting the first keyframe for opacity at the start, we are pasting the same value here. So now if I click and drag the time indicator back to the start and back to 5 seconds, we can see the circle move, change scale down and up, and also change opacity, exactly how we want it. So as I continue to drag my time indicator from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, I want to create the same opacity animation on the circle moving back to point A as I did moving to point B. So next I will drag my time indicator straight over to the fourth scale keyframe on the timeline, as this scale keyframe indicates the midway point between point B and A. We will also see the circle move from point B to the midway point in the composition panel. So what I'm going to do here this time is copy the keyframe which holds the value for 30% opacity I created earlier. So I'll carefully select the keyframe at the midway point for opacity. With it selected, I'll press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. And with my time indicator exactly midpoint, I'll press Command V on Mac or Control V on PC to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear for opacity and the circle is now back to 30%. So as I continue to drag my time indicator across to 10 seconds, I want the circle to change opacity back to 100%. So again, I'm going to use the same copy and paste technique. So I'll click on the first opacity keyframe at the start of the composition to select. With it selected, I'll press Command C on Mac or Control C on PC to copy. And with my time indicator exactly at 10 seconds, I'll press Command V on Mac or Control V on PC to paste. Upon pasting, we will now see a new keyframe appear for opacity and the circle is now back to 100%. By copying and pasting the first keyframe for opacity at the start, we are pasting the same value here again. Great! So that finishes the opacity keyframes, and that finishes the animation. So now I'll come into the timeline panel and click on the eye symbol over on the far left of the guides. Clicking this will toggle the visibility off. Now we have finished the animation. We do not need the guides any longer. So now we can see we have lots of keyframes in the timeline. Now once they are placed in the timeline, you can move them around quite easily, and you will want to do this to alter the way your animation works. For example, by clicking and dragging the middle position keyframe and dragging left on top of the second scale and opacity keyframe, if I drag the time indicator back to the start and press spacebar, we can see the effect that has. The circle dashes over to point B real fast, then takes longer to return to point A. This time, I'll drag the second position keyframe back into the middle, but this time drag the first keyframe up to the second keyframe for scale and opacity, and the last keyframe into the fourth keyframe for scale and opacity. Now looking carefully, just under the time indicator, we have the work area bar. What I'll do now is place my mouse cursor carefully over the blue edge on the left, then drag in to meet the first position keyframe. Then I'll carefully place my mouse cursor over the blue edge on the right, then drag in to meet the last position keyframe. So what we have done here is close in the work area on these few frames here in the middle. So now I'll make sure my time indicator is inside this work area and I'll press spacebar and we can see the effect that has. We are now previewing a loop between these points on the animation. Here we can see the circle quickly dashes to point B, then back to A again much faster. Also, the circle changes opacity as it moves to point B and back again to point A. This gives us a different animation entirely. So I'll press spacebar to stop the preview. So now I'll carefully come and double click on the workspace area, and this will snap it back to the full timeline. Next, I'll carefully click and drag the keyframe back to where they were earlier. 
I'll put the start keyframe for position back to the start and the third keyframe back to the end. If I drag the time indicator back to the start and press spacebar, we can see the effect that has. We are now back to our original animation. So this is how keyframes are used to animate in After Effects. As we progress on this course, we are going to be animating more and more, expanding on these principles we have learnt in this video to create more complex and dynamic effects. So to recap, some key things to remember are, when placing keyframes, we must first make sure the time indicator is in the correct position on the timeline. To add a keyframe for the first time, we click on the stopwatch. After the first keyframe is added, to add a new keyframe, we need to press the Add Keyframe button, the diamond shape over on the far left of the timeline. Keyframes can be copied and pasted to duplicate values, and keyframes can be dragged around the timeline to edit and change the nature of animations over time. So once you are happy with your animation, come up to File, scroll down to Save As, and what we will need to do here is save a new version of our After Effects animation. Now, I'm going to save this in the folder here, in the project folder. You can save this wherever you wish, but make sure you remember where it is as we will be using this in the next episode. Here, I'll change the name to Simple Animation Project and click OK. Perfect. Now, looking at our animation in preview mode, it looks great, but there is something rigid and plain about the movement. If we look at the animation I previewed at the start, we can see it moves more smoothly and with more flow. Now this is because we have easing applied to the keyframes. If we look in the timeline panel, we can see the keyframes are different from the ones we just applied to our animation. These keyframes have different shapes applied. In After Effects, this is called easing. So, to add nice, smooth effects to our animations, we can apply easing. In the next episode, we are going to expand on the animation we just created, and I'm going to show you how you can add easing to your keyframes in After Effects. So, see you in the next video.